this is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast. This is going to be a very different kind of episode because, one, James isn't here. Where's James? It's really weird. Like, he just disappeared into oblivion. Maybe Brainiac took him and collected him. (laughs) Uh, What sucks even more is, like, originally this podcast was going to be epic because it was going to be me, Brian, and James sitting in the same room for the first time. Uh, But they canceled the Arnold in Columbus, and that's what James was coming for, and it really is sad, but we're not going to dwell on sadness. Um, We're going to talk about some news, and then we're going to get back to pilot season. What's pilot season, you ask? Well, we started pilot season as like an offshoot of when we just go back to each Superman series and we review the pilot. We actually kicked off this uh, with Lois and Clark, and we did it with that episode because it was the 25th anniversary of Lois and Clark. Um, so we're going to review the pilot episode of The Adventures of Superman. So that's going to be cool. And it'll be our first, besides Superman the movie, this is our first time really jumping back into um, pre-crisis Superman in different medium. Uh, the only other kind of pre crisis thing we've done is we talked about Action Comics 1 when we reviewed for Action Comics 1000. But enough ado about that. Let's talk some news. You ready to talk about some news there, Brian? Who's sitting on the couch in the cave? What news? Well, this year was what a news le- is you speaketh of? <laughs> this year was a leap year, and so we had a February 29th. Wait, which means we actually February 29th. <laughs> what? How is that significant in the Kryptonian universe? That's technically Superman's birthday. So Superman actually what? got a birthday this year. I know, right? Um, so that was cool. Just want to throw that out there. How old is he, Tyler? I can't do math. I mean, he's 80-some, but... You so you know, divide that by, like, like four, four? That's, like, 20. He's, like, 20? 40? What? 60? 75? Common Core. 90? Um, uh, carry so, the one? So I can't remember the media outlet because I lost it in my notes, but allegedly it's being reported that Supergirl's going to be 20 episodes this season. But usually it's, what, 23? 22 to 23. Um, hmm. Which is interesting that they're cutting it short. Um, maybe it's for the good. You know, I think sometimes... If they cut the thing short, we get better quality uh, because they focus in tighter on some of the stories than expanding it. We also know that and Melissa and her husband Chris are expecting, so maybe that has some sort of play into it, um, how it will affect next season. We'll see. I mean, you know, if people are freaking out and worried, I'm not because, A, she has an awesome stunt double, and, B, you just shoot around that and use tricks. Yeah, those stunt you, doubles are not like the ones in Spaceballs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in Spaceballs, I mean, uh, so let's let's look real quick here. Sure. Season 2 was 22 episodes. Season 3 was 23. Season 4 was 22. We're at Season 5 that right now is slated for 22, and we'll see what happens. Season 1, the CBS season, was only 20 episodes. So, there you go. Um, Here's what I will say about this. Now... I, uh, I'm very behind on all these shows since Crisis, because Crisis just kind of blew me away a little bit. And then those first episodes after Crisis was just like, well, okay, where are we going? But anyway, um, I feel that when a season shortened, like take HBO shows, for, for example. HBO shows are very successful, not only because they're written very well, but there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of filler. Like, everything seems to have purpose. Until you get to those later seasons of Game of Thrones. But, but but I think that sometimes less is more. And I know that I get a little exhausted with these shows when I'm trying to watch a whole season again. And I'm like, oh, gosh. You know, Felicity, for gosh sakes. Oh, you know? geez. Well, it's like, I mean, let's yeah. look at Legends and Black Lightning. They both teetered around the 16, 18 episodes. And Black Lightning is about to hit its season finale. For real. I think next week. And I think that works great. I think I think that's like 16, 18 is like the magic number 
for these shows because you want enough episodes to let the series breathe, um, but not too tight. Like um, where, for example, like Daredevil and Luke No, you got to be talking about my favorite Marvel character ever. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just talking about the way those shows are. They're like 10 episodes, which is great. It's tight, but then it's so tight that you don't feel like you take a break in the adventure. It's like one story broken up into 10 pieces. Like you're watching a movie that's just 10 hours long. I, th- I actually think Daredevil went 13 episodes, actually. Maybe. It I think so. So you're say, so you saying 13 is too little and t- uh, yeah. 20 is not enough? 20 is fine. I mean, before fun? that starts to, because I like an episode where you have a beginning, a middle, and end that closes, and and there's a Fair thread enough. that carries over. You know, like the idea of the overarching season villain, but you have all these other villains throughout that you fight, and you're building towards something to where, you know, it's not like each episode is a day. Um, you actually get to spend time with the characters. There are jumps in times. The story plays out. Different things happen. You get to play around with your characters and explain. Um, the story like it's just not so tight that um like i said i, I use daredevil as an example because it's, it's good similar. it's a great example um and i mean the we were talking before we started recording like the watchman season one it's really good but it's so tight that i mean every episode is interlocked that you could literally edit them together and watch it straight through as one movie one like a peter jackson movie <laughs> <laughs> Extended version. Just like you could put all the all the Lord of the Rings and sit down, like edit them all together, and just watch it straight through. And you, if you cut out the credits, you literally would not know where one movie started and one ended. Will we ever find out what the deal with Saruman was? Why he went bad? We don't know. I actually have the Hobbit extended cut on Blu-ray upstairs. My friend let me borrow, and I might explore that. But yeah, we're gonna I know the answer, but I'm not going to ruin it for it. <laughs> but, right. but anyway, let's move on here. So. So, <clears throat> what the heck are we talking about? I don't know. This is what we do. Um, just as an Episodes. idea, since we are going to talk about uh, the George Reeves Superman series, yeah, Superman has had a very good. Well, we'll say super characters a very good run on television. The Adventures of Superman um, ran 104 episodes. We're not counting seasons because that's weird. James and I had this discussion before about how they broke stuff, especially when we get to Superboy. Superboy ran for 100 episodes. Lois and Clark only ran for 87 episodes. And Smallville did 217. Um, And that one was affected in season 7 because of the writer's strike, and it was shortened to like 16 episodes, something like that. And then Supergirl we know is going to be at 100 plus. Because right now they just um, did their 100th episode, and they have the rest of whatever this season, and then of course it was renewed for next season. Uh, so that's just an interesting thought. You know, I think it'll be a while, maybe until something catches Smallville, <laughs> um, because Smallville. Fa- were in Superman the series? I didn't count it because it wasn't live action. It, but we can check real quick because animation's weird, where they do like a, the initial order is like 13, and then the next. That's why their seasons are so weird. I don't think it went to 100. I don't think it did. You have to have so many to be syndicated. I think you have to have 100 episodes for syndication. But it didn't. It went to 54. With season 1 technically as IMDb listed as 13 episodes. Okay. Season 2 as 28 episodes. And then season 3 being 13 episodes. So, but man, that is a dang good cartoon. But I think with the with long the secret like with Smallville and its longevity was is and I've said this before and I've talked with my friend Zach about this is like you got to look at Smallville season one through four is one book of the I chapter agree. five six and seven is the next book eight nine and ten is the next book because there's through lines through each one of those brackets of the story at this point it should be um, but we know Doom Patrol is. Because it's going to be – because it's more adult. And like I've said before, and i got an argument with people online is – I'll argue with you. Let's go for it. <laughs> no, you'll agree with me on this. I love DC, but where, they're, where they are falling right now is they don't have any content that they're really cultivating younger audiences. 
all the DC Universe originals are geared towards us, our generation. You're right. We, we, we love it, okay? And we're cool with it because we understand it. Yeah. Um, I was explaining, like, my idea with, like, with Stargirl is hopefully that it'd be more of a family-esque show because that's what The Flash is, really. When they, when they, Berlanti said when he created, like, broke up the shows was Arrow was supposed to be the dark, gritty adult drama. The Flash was supposed to be the family show. And each one of the shows was supposed to have a little bit of a different niche to it. And I'm, I like that because it gives them all a different flavor. And I like being able to watch these live action shows with my kids. You know, new ones that I haven't seen a thousand times. Like, of course, I can share Lois and Clark with my kids. Or Solomon likes to, when I watch the 90s Flash, you know. But it's nice to watch something new together. And I was, like, kind of leaning that Stargirl might have that kind of um, flavor to it. That it was a potential of, like, launching, you know, for younger kids. Because think about it. What do the kids have right now? Yeah, we were, we were just talking about this, like, a week or so ago. Like, when we were kids, we had Super Friends reruns. We had Superman the show. We had Batman, Static Shock, Freakazoid, God bless it. Uh That would be on. Yeah, the Iron Man show, Fantastic Four, you know, not that Marvel. We had a, we had our Saturday morning Marvel, Spider-Man. which was Spider Man and X Men. Yep. Then we had our Sunday morning Marvel on UPN, which was Iron Man, Fantastic Four, and the Hulk. Like it came on sometime. Yeah. Um. You know, like, I don't remember, because back when there was, like, the United Paramount Network, but they also, like, that, that one channel showed the WB, UPN, and some, like, WGNT. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember all the weird shows that just got... Because yeah. kids today will never understand what syndication is. Nope. Like, when they talk about that Superboy was created for syndication, it really wasn't... It was, it was produced, then sold to a network to just be, like, a rerun show. It wasn't, like, a prime time, like, mm-hmm. yeah... I, I I do I know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Superboy, when it was on, because I don't remember that much of it, but it was on WGN, though, wasn't it? I think so, because it was on one of those networks. And my story with Superboy is, it was one of those shows. I remember one time seeing part of an episode, and I think it was a John Hames Newton episode. I was in my grandparents' basement flipping through the TV, and I saw it. And for the longest time, I remembered it, and everyone. Like, I would say something, and everyone's like, I don't remember that show. But it ran for 100 episodes. But because of, like, the signification and all that weird stuff, I guess that's why it slipped under the radar. Until I met you, I thought the Super – and DC Universe came out. So I met you in that. I thought the Superboy show was like a Mandela effect. <laughs> I thought, like, did that show exist? Because I, I want to think it did. But I, I, no one could remember it. I it, My faith in that show and the affirmation that it existed – Occurred in 2006 um, when Superman Returns came out because I got off work one night and I went to Walmart and they had like all the Christopher Reeve movies out for five bucks on DVD. They had for ten bucks you could get season one of Lois and Clark and season one of Superboy. And I was like, it did exist, but that was the only season you could get. (laughs) It did exist Um, until later you could get the others digitally, but it's very hard to track down physical copies of seasons two, three, and four. But we digress. Anyways, so Star Girl, I don't know what's going on. So, we'll wait and see. Well, well, the thing, the thing, of, the thing, the th- I think the whole point we're trying to say here is, like nowadays, these kids, they they don't have nothing, man. Right. Like they, like you have to wait every May for a Marvel movie to come out, and then you, like these DC movies. The DC movies are created for adults. Yeah, they're not even. Yeah, they're not even kids' movies anymore. The the offshoots were kind of working in a child's market with. Uh, we had, and it, even it had some scenes that I was like, ah, was Ninja Turtles and Batman. We had uh, the 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 Return of the Cape Crusader, and the Batman vs. Two Face one. That's still for us too. That's still for us and too, but it, it's a little bit more kid friendly. Uh, the most kid-friendly Batman movie we've had has been uh, Scooby-Doo and Batman: The Brave and the Bold. But we have so we have Teen Titans Go, which is it is hilarious. It's hilarious. I love the movie, and I like Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. That was pretty epically funny. 
Uh, and I watched that with the kids. But even then, that's in a weird niche kind of vein. And then we have DC Superhero Girls, which the new version, I like the old version, except it was the weird, like, 10-minute episode clips or a couple minutes where it wasn't actually a show. And then when they actually make it a full show, it's like the animation's weird, the style's weird. So um, do you think do you think that they are holding out for HBO Max? That HBO Max is gonna come and we're gonna get crap load of cartoons for kids, I, crap load of stuff. I would love it. I just would love to have something new to watch with my kids. Um, we watched all of Justice League action and that was great. You know, that it was a cool, different kind of series. Like, yes, it was like back to like the 10 minute episode things and they weren't so um, episodic but it was yeah. a good cartoon and it was fun but I feel like that cartoon got so undersold because I remember seeing pictures of all this merchandise but I never could find it I, we have a couple of Justice League action toys that we found that were clearance we had the large we have Batman, Superman, Flash Lex Luthor um, and Plastic Man. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other toys that they made that just you could not find. And I'm thinking with James and I talked about where Spin Masters and McFarlane now have the licensing to toys that maybe we'll actually start to see because it better, more DC toys because it felt like there was no. There was no toys. There was nothing generating. Um, they had the multiverse figures, and then they released this weird line. Like I have the Superman up there, uh, the second to the last one, that was just like a Justice League, and it had like Superman, Batman, and like Flash, and like one other person. But it had nothing else to do, and it was just random. And then they did the Batman Missions line, which was cool. They did a lot of figures for that line. But you couldn't find them. Like, in stores, you f- I found Robin, which you got Solomon. Um, yeah, I Robin too. And I found Batman and Joker. I didn't like the Joker. But then I bought Batgirl, Mr. Freeze, and Scarecrow and Nightwing on Amazon because that's the only place I could find them. Yeah. Um, so but, but there just hasn't been, like, anything but Batman – for kids. But it's possible that this Stargirl, sh- Stargirl Cheryl show, I can't even talk, uh, could be the best of both worlds. Because if, if they make it a JSA-focused thing, then you bring in this older crowd because we have these older superheroes, we have this older team, we have those DC diehards that love the JSA, you know, like me. Because uh, if I see Alan Scott Green Lantern, uh, I'm just going to crap a chicken. <laughs> but... Uh, um, and then you got this passing of the torch uh, to Stargirl from 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 Starman and stuff. Um, it could be this family show that we definitely need. Well, but I mean, my only I fear, fear, my only fear, fear about it is, are they going to bring very adult, adult and new age type thinking to this kids show? Well, I mean, with it being back on the CW now, it kind of makes me wonder. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it is neat that um, that it's a new, it's an Earth 2, though. It's a new Earth 2. So, like, all the, every it can do whatever it wants. It's not tied to anything. But that's enough about Stargirl. We'll talk about it when it premieres. Um other news we got the justice league apocalypse trailer (laughs) which i'm wondering because this is like the culmination of all the connective movies it was inevitable you know like i really liked one thing they did with in this universe is how they kicked off with justice league war um and then in reign of the superman they brought it back around where dark side and it really, I think, for this universe worked well. These connective films uh, bringing it like that. And now Justice League or D- Justice League Dark Apocalypse is like the all-out war on Apocalypse where they're going after Darkseid once and for all. 
And I'm wondering if after this movie, if they'll make any more connective films. Mm-hmm. Because when when Batman Hush ended, which is the last one with Batman in it, he was he was back to his current slash rebirth style costume. Um, when Superman in uh, Batman Hush had more of his Superman Reborn costume and that's what he's taken on into this um, and then Wonder Woman at the end of Wonder Woman Bloodlines she has her cur- more current comic book costume where they've tried to mold them out of the new 52 style costumes into what's going on closer to now so I'm wondering if because the next film after this one is a uh, Superman, Man of Tomorrow, which is supposed to be an original story, and we don't know anything else other about about it than that right now. But I thought they were going to do Long Halloween. They announced three a year. They'll announce the next movies at um, Comic Con. Usually, is when we find out. Like the the Friday of Comic Con is when we find out um, what the next. DC Universe movies will be, so we'll we'll just we'll just have to wait and see, you know. Um, but I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. Hey, hey, man, I just remember back when we got one a year or one every other year. Now they're cranking them out three a year. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Heck, I remember when Michael Keaton was Batman. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Hey, George Romero making a Justice League movie or something. The the. The zombie guy? George Romero? I don't know. What was that Justice League movie we were promised? George Miller's? George Miller. There we go. George Romero. Sorry, I'm from Pittsburgh. Give me a break. (laughs) Romero makes everything. It'll be a... Man, I need to Google search because there was a guy who was working on a documentary about that. Much like the uh, Death of Superman Lives documentary. Because that's going to be one of those Hollywood... What could have been... Because it was so far into production... Like, they didn't even start shooting, you know? That's what sucks. Everything was ready. And... Could Batman. It's one of those things that I think it'll be, it'll be romanticized. I don't think it would have been that good of a movie from things I've heard. I think there was great elements in it. Um, but it's just kind of one of those things that people blow it up because they'll romanticize what it is, what it could have been without... With that Tim Burton Superman movie, man, there's no romanticizing about Christopher Walken as Brainiac. You know you want to see that. Well, I just think about at that time where Walken was, and this is at the same time, and then I think where Tim Burton was this time. So this is around, what, Mars Attacks era Burton? Yes. Which Mars Attacks is, like, my least favorite Tim Burton movie, but I haven't watched it in years. But my favorite Tim Burton movie came out in 99, which was would have been two years later, which is Sleepy Hollow, which had Christopher Walken in it. Wow, Superman on my ship. You don't hire Christopher Walken to be an actor. You hire Christopher Walken to be Christopher Walken. But anyways, Apocalypse, it looks really good. It looks like it's, it's, it's rated R, which the second or which the other Justice League film was rated R as well. And it's always weird when you do R-rated animated films. Like, it's really weird watching the, uh, what do you call it, the Suicide Squad Hell to Pay. Like, there's things I really like in that movie, but it's just R animation. Just it, it goes back to what we just said. Here's another movie. Can't watch it with the kids. Yeah, because this one's definitely going to be bad. Sure. This one's going to be violent and dark, because even in the trailer you see, like, dead bodies of everything that's happened on Apocalypse. But 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 it's uh, I mean I'm really excited because uh, I love Swamp Thing you know and you, you you got this you got Just League Dark taking the focus on here Constantine Swamp Thing and Swamp Thing and Etrigan both got like shortchanged in the first Justice League Dark movie. Don't get me started. But anyways, so that's that trailer dropped and then something else happened. Something else dropped. Uh, it wasn't my cholesterol. No, it's 
Oh, that's right. We got Batmobile photos. Yes. The I'm okay. Like this Batman, I'm excited. I think right now I like Matt Reeves as a filmmaker. And I think I'm more excited for the villain aspect of this film because it's Riddler, Penguin, and Catwoman. And I think Catwoman got a really good remake with Nolan's films. Riddler's been due a really good remake because he started out interesting on Gotham, but then for some reason Gotham just slipped into camp. Like, it's like it's so easy to slip into camp with Batman, and I'm like... When was Riddler ever a split personality? Right, and that was kind of like... He's such a compulsive. And he, he goes like... It's one of those things like where you have someone do a character based on the character at a certain time, and all of a sudden you can't break from that. Um, like Jim Carrey was Jim Carrey like as Frank Gorshin-style Riddler. Um, and in the comics now... The Riddler's become a really... He's still the smart, narcissistic type person, but he's a little bit darker as far as being more serious in the puzzles. He's not more of the Frank... <laughs> like, I love Frank Gorshin's Riddler. It worked great for Batman 66. Yes. But we need to break free from that, and that's where I think they started with Gotham, but then eventually they ended up there. They ended, they ended up with, like, the campy versions of the characters. Um... Yeah, it, it got absolutely ridiculous. Like, so I'm more interested in, in that aspect with this. Um, but somebody else needs a redo, and that's definitely the penguin. Yes, I mean, I like the penguin on Gotham. Robin Lord Taylor, he he did great. He did a great job. Um, but same thing happened to him. What happened to the Riddler? Started getting really campy. He started getting campy uh, because they really they also once again it, they drug it out and that's I think that's the problem sometimes they had him for the whole series of a Batman prequel show that ran for twenty some episodes a season you can only do so much you know prequel lies um, but yeah the penguin I mean Danny DeVito I do not like his penguin at all it's nothing against Danny it's once a, it's Tim Burton's vision. Where he wanted to take that character, I am not a fan. Um, so I'm really more interested in that. I'm really interested in this Batman. The fact that it's being filmed in Scotland, like it's being the the uh, completely breaking the American landscape that we've seen with uh, use of Detroit and other cities to be Gotham, Pittsburgh. Uh, so. Because, you know, I like the, the atmosphere of, like, the cloudiness, the dreariness that Gotham should bring. So that actually excites me that it's being filmed there. Even though there's, like, a couple shots, there's one shot, and particularly in Batman Begins, that I hate. It's a reverse shot when Bruce, like, you have Alfred standing in front of Wayne Manor. is where it burnt down. Ah, uh, okay. And it's a reverse shot of Bruce in front of him, and you just see the English countryside. And you can't tell me that Gotham's anywhere near there, okay? Because Batman's supposed to, like, live outside Gotham, and I'm like, there is no city anywhere. I live in the country, and I can see Columbus, okay? Um, so that, so back to, we had the reveal of the costume. It's still not set with me. We've never, we haven't got a great full-fledged costume photo of Pattinson. Well, I think they're still working on it. I mean, I think... Possibly. I mean, I'm not, like, right now, I'm okay with it. Like, I feel like I got my Batman costume. I got pretty much almost everything I wanted with the Affleck suit. I didn't really like the thick bat, but I roll with it. I didn't like the super short ears, but I roll with it. Sure. Um, there's elements to the costume of what I've seen of Pattinson that I'm cool with. Um, but I just... You know, it's a car, and it's not uncomic bookly accurate. Like, it's very much like the '80s. It's a Batmobile, back to being more of a car. Yes, it looks like it. Vin Diesel and his crew were working on it in the back of their shop during the Fast Saga. Um, it looks like a souped-up Charger, um, but I mean, 
it's the first car, like actual car we've had since 66. Because ever since we got the amazing Batmobile from 89, everything else has just been... A tank. Extravagant. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the the Tumbler is my least favorite Batmobile because it's just a big old tank. And then what I liked about Affleck's Batmobile is they merged the Tumbler with the Keaton. Yes. You know, the Clooney Batmobile is cool to look at, but it makes no dang sense, okay? With freaking an open top and a one-seater. But what about all the neon lights and the cool stuff? That's the car, man. Chick stick the car. It'll look be- it looks better than the Batman Forever Batmobile. I'll give you that. Other than the open top, like I don't like the open top. It makes no sense. Um, but if someone were to say, "Hey Tyler, you want to drive the Batmobile?" and they handed me Clooney's Batmobile, uh, I would be okay with that. I would be like, sure. I'll still drive it. But all that to say, I'm excited for the movie. I keep my high hopes. The car looks cool. I'm not, like, disappointed because I didn't know, really know what to expect. And I'm still kind of in that same vein. I think the, cool, the coolest aspect, I think, about the suit is it really, it really looks like that he, he took the gun and made the bat logo with it. And I hope so because that gives it a different – it gives it some so – it gives it some story points, something different. Um, my biggest thing is I don't want Batman starting over again. Like this is supposed to be like year two. Uh, my biggest promise with the Affleck bat was that he's in his career. So we can kind of jump in. Kind of like Batman the Animated Series. Like his origin stuff was told backwards, but it started. We had Batman. We had Robin. Um... And well, what if this is supposed? What if this is passing as a younger Affleck? If that was the case, I'd be cool with. But I doubt they would do that. But if they did, I'm fine with that. Um, but I just I want to see Batman established because I really there are so many characters that I love in Batman that we'll never get to if we don't start with a Batman already established. Like with Affleck, it'd been very easy to spin off and get Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, Red Hood. You could have just jumped in with all of them already existing. Because all we've wanted, all I mean, we've been talking about this for years, you and I. All we want is this older season Batman, and we want a freaking Bat family. I mean, even Titans. You know, Titans has given us an old Batman, um, but we're not focusing on him. But we now have Nightwing, and we have Jason Todd, Robin. So at least we have that, and then. We have a Batwoman show, which, you know, had an, an older Bruce. Yeah. And now we have Batwoman taking over. Um, but I want to see, like, Batgirl and Robin. Like, I really want to see Batman and Robin together as a team. Like, when people always talk about pairs and duos, they're always Batman and Robin. But we've never really got to see them on screen together. Not because... <laughs> exactly. Because... You know, in the movie Batman and Robin, they worked together a little bit, but they were fighting against each other. And then they really didn't get to work together at the end of Batman Forever. But all that to say is, like, that's why I wish we would get something like that. But let's take a quick break and we'll move on to talking about George Reeves as Superman. All right. So we're back after our little break. What? What is that? Brian, you hear that? coming through through the multiverse. I'm deaf. I don't hear nothing, man. Where you been? Maybe. James, is that you? James! All right, James, are you there? James. Yeah. Oh, my God, he's back! He must go back to us. What was it like being on Brainiac's ship? How'd you get away? How'd you escape? Had to uh, uh, use some super strength, fight my way out. If anybody's got super strength, it's James. Can always be stronger. Um, so, James, I'm glad you're back. You've joined us just in time to talk about the Superman we've never really talked about on the show before. I mean, we have in passing, but we've never really talked about it. And after watching this episode, because it's been a while since I watched it, I realized 
we need to talk about it more. And we might slowly maybe work on the first season of this show. Because I forgot that it's only 25 minutes an episode. Yeah, they're not very long. Not sure what the standard was for television shows back then, but I mean, it makes sense. Don't know, the, you know the the length, but it, it's just it's weird. Like I I totally forgot. So there weren't many there weren't many two parters. So everything was uh, usually a standalone story. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not. I haven't watched a whole lot of it, but I have no doubt that it's it's fairly episodic. It is. I've watched a good chunk of the first season and the third. I think is the one I, I have on DVD because I found it really cheap. Mm. I'd only seen a few episodes when I was younger, so um, it's not something I've actually watched through, and I've been meaning to. Um, with DC Universe, so I've watched some. Like, It'll be good to. I made my way. Be good to give me a reason to have to watch a couple episodes at a time. And we, like I said, we might work through this because I think it's it's an interesting look at the character because it is pre-crisis. Like the Christopher Reeve movies were pre-crisis, um, and we've talked about those in length. But this show is. We haven't really dug into, and it's just kind of nice to go back to that time. Well, before. Well, you know, we've discussed Reeves. Reeves is heavily Silver Age. You know, this is this is Golden Age. Exactly. Um, like this is out. This was out before the Silver Age even began. I'm pretty sure. Yes, Silver Age didn't start till the '60s. When yeah, the first the, be- the beginning of the Silver Age is when Flash appears. Barry Allen. Yeah, when it was yeah when Barry Allen appeared. Um, so we're talking the Adventures of Superman, first episode called Superman on Earth, premiered September nineteenth, nineteen fifty two. This is before my mom was born. I watched a couple of these episodes with my grandma. I remember watching the I Love Lucy episode. That's the, one, that's the one I remember the most. Because, you know, my grandma loved I Love Lucy. So that's like, I remember that one. It was my, it was my, it was my more clear introduction to George as the character. You know, I mean, I remember once in a while when I was a, when I was a little one. When I was a tyke, <laughs> my uh, watching some things with my grandpa once in a while, you know, we'd watch some Batman '66, and once in a while we'd catch a little bit of uh, uh, George Reeves Superman. In, in my mind, so, I always that was all so so little. It's just it's it's just like clip show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I agree. In my mind, I've always paired George's. Superman with Adam West Batman. Like, they would be a Justice League together in the TV universe. You know, Wonder Woman was always kind of that iffy one, because in my mind, I still kind of put her with them, but at the same time, she could fall in with Chris and Keaton as, like, their own trinity. So, she always kind of can go back and forth. I don't know. I think you put I put Linda Carter with Adam and uh, George only because she, I don't know, it was more campy. Um, not saying like Christopher Reeves Superman didn't have a little bit of campiness, but I don't know. I, I put her I put her more with George and Adam only because it was on TV. So here's some cool trivia about this. This is the first DC TV series. Um, so that's kind of cool to think about. Like the first DC Comics property brought to television. So the serials never reached TV before this? They were for film. 
seeing a live action Superman like in their home. Part of why it did so well. But let's let's get into this. So here's I'll, I'll give you another trivia piece here in a second because I'm watching this and it starts off we have a narrator. Now we get the we get the awesome intro with the faster than a speeding bullet. You know all the stuff that we know the truth justice American way. You know, faster than a locomotive. Look up in the sky. I think um, that's one. Of the, I think that's one of the best intros ever. Uh, I like. I like the uh, cartoon though. The. Uh, Fleischer. Yeah, fl- thank you, thank you, James. Fleischer. Oh, yeah. Fleischer's uh, one's a little bit cooler, but I think for super, like I just love that nostalgic. You know, faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> More powerful than a locomotive. They tall buildings in a single bound. It's, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And, I, and, and, I don't, and we'll never, I don't think we'll ever see it again. Strange visitor from another planet. I don't know why they haven't done something on Supergirl. Maybe they'll do it with Superman in the TV series. Or like with Mixie or something where he puts him in a retro thing. And like he recreates that intro. Yes, it would. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, you know, I think, because I think mix you. would think that'd be an easy well to mine, you know? <laughs> exactly. I mean, because the Superboy show, definitely not like that. Uh, Lois and Clark, no. Lois and Clark just had their, like, like okay, it's all in my head. And then it had the cape flowing. So the Fleischer cartoons was 1942. I knew it was before this, but I, it's ten years before this, if you think about it, and only four years after the comic. Um, but at the beginning of this, we have the narrator talking, and we it does mention the um, the more golden age where it's a race of supermen. Yes, they're all referred to as supermen, and it says Krypton's a green planet. Which always made sense to me. Um, but we have the council... Of uh, the Temple of Wisdom and the Council, and we meet mm-hmm. Jor-El, who actually says Krypton. I noticed See, that. I want to mention that. I want to mention that. And I mentioned it because like, oh, okay, so I'm, it's not just Marlon Brando. Like they said, okay, all right, maybe that's where Brando got it. He was like, oh, that's how they said it. Um, but all their costumes look like from Flash Gordon. Yes. And what's funny is I was reading is the costumes came from recycled. Flash Gordon serials, Captain Marvel serials, and another show I'd not heard of for the Krypton costume. What's the one you didn't hear of? I didn't write it down because I didn't know it. Huh. Um, and I thought that was interesting just because, like, you know, it's always interesting uh, when they recycle props and stuff. Like, one of the reasons 300 was able to keep under budget is there wasn't a whole lot of props created for that movie. They recycled a lot right. of props. This will never happen anyway. A lot of the shields and armor and all that was recycled from Troy. Really? Yeah. And that was one of the things they were able to keep it under budget was they just they went to the warehouse and got stuff out. Like they didn't have to create new things. Similar, similar thing happened in the movie Dark City. Nice. That that's such a good movie. It's so underrated. Oh, amazing. And Dark City. Yeah. Dark City did that, and then the Matrix yeah. used the Dark City sets to help keep costs down. Um, but then we meet Roseanne, Roseanne, and, Go- and Kogan, or Godzilla, Co- Kogan, and Rosan, or Roseanne. Um, Roseanne Barr. <laughs> yeah, she was on the Council of Krypton. <laughs> and what cracked? No me, wonder they exploded. What cracked me up Ew. is like, you know, when he goes over, he's talking about the, the, the rocket he created, and he pulls down like a a chart. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like, I've created this prototype rocket. He you know, does he pull a stick out? He's just like, this This would fit 200,000 people or, or something like that. He, no, he says I need 5,000 5, workers men, 5, and 5,000 workers and limit, unlimited resources so I can construct this to get us off the planet. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then he does say Lara to his wife, so that was cool. They do a thing where he's like, I love, I love the overacting that they did like in the early days of television and stuff. Where he's like, oh, 
Lara. Huh. I should have. I, sh I should have done it sooner. Months ago. If only I could have. I <laughs> just have the prototype. I can maybe get you and and I looked at I looked at that rocket like no. no like no. if any of us is gonna go, just our son. It's like it's like let's get you in there. Let's get you in there. And they already plan on going to Earth. That's what was interesting. They're sending a rocket to Earth. But his first plan is like I'll let my child die. Like I'll send you my wife. But but me and the child will die here. We'll be all right. Yeah. You'll find a new man. I did like that. Um, Jarrell, the stock footage shot is the Griffith Observatory. It's in California. That's famous in Rebel Without a Cause and other films. So we got to see some nice green forest trees for Jarrell's lab. Um, there's just there's some fun campiness acting in the Krypton scene. You know, uh, in that in that council, there's now they all on all their different uniforms. They seem to have like different symbols on them too. And I think that was probably carried into Superman the movie later. Well, like they they all just stuff. have random costumes from different stuff that looks sci-fi. Yeah, but one of them had a sun on it, I swear. It, it did. That's what I'm saying. Flash Gordon. <laughs> like, it was just random stuff. Like, it looks sci-fi. It's kind of like in the comic. I just wear that. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so, he, so, Cal is sent from Krypton to Earth. And there's some interesting ways they film stuff where you can tell, like, oh, yeah, that shot and that shot aren't being together. That's rear projection. You know, just the old time that where they produce stuff is fun. Um, I learned, I don't remember, the actor who played Jarrell was like a last-minute replacement. They had another person who was cast as Jarrell. So the actor that actually played him is uncredited in the episode, and so is the actor that plays young Clark. So they switched him out. Now that is not some real overacting in this episode. Yeah, we'll get there. But <laughs> here's one of the most interesting facts about this, because it's the f this is the first live action. I don't because uh, I it's been so long since I've watched the Kirk Allen. Um, no, 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 in the in the serial, you're talking about the parents' names. Yeah. Yeah, they were named that. So we have Eben and Sarah Kent. And there's a whole interesting thing about how the Kents didn't have, like, set names. Like, it wasn't until, I think, um, Jerry Siegel was writing Superboy. There's so much of our Superman lore that we hold so dear that actually didn't come from Superman comics. It came from the original Siegel um, stories and other writers creating Superboy, writing in the Superboy comics. Yes. And that's really what cemented Jonathan and Martha. Because there was like, John, I think at one point it was John and Mary, uh, Kent. Like it was very, like just in, the same thing with the Luther and Luthor. And then the, later they put the Lex with it. It was just very tossed around. Like, oh, uh, nobody really keeps track of this stuff. Uh, that's why in our one conversation James and I had years ago, about the location of Smallville, like, and stuff, because they talked about it differently at different times. Well, I think Superboy, I mean, I'm probably wrong on this, but I think Superboy introduced John and Martha. That's the parents' names. They introduced uh, Crypto. Yeah, because Superboy is very, very yeah. Silver Age. Which it's so weird of names, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eben. <laughs> That's for sure. But Eben's not even a name that you hear anymore. Like, he references an old person name. You know, like. I've never heard of Eben before in my life. Exactly. <laughs> um, so. But Sarah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean why, why not just be Abraham and Sarah? Or, uh, yeah, Abraham and Sarah. You know what I'm saying? Like. We're gonna name her Sarah. Maybe they couldn't afford the extra ink for Abraham, so she's like, ah, even. <laughs> um, but they find him and they they quickly adopt. They take him. They don't do like the comics of like putting him in an orphanage. No, they they keep him and they raise him. But they seem to be much older in Golden Age, man, than on this show. Like, they seem to be well, older, like, it's like, kind older. of. That's kind of how the Kents were originally. It, they were already old, almost grandparent age. They were at that. 
transition where, and it wasn't really till Smallville that they kind of de-aged them. Right. Um, I mean, at the time, you know, they, they keep the baby because as the way they describe it in the show, like, they have a baby and they have a crazy story because the, the ship explodes, disintegrates, basically. So there's, like, not even evidence or anything. So they're like, all we have is a baby and a crazy story, a wild story. It really, it, I so. think one thing I like about the series, and we'll get, is like, I'm kind of curious to, like, move forward, is almost taking out more of the sci-fi elements of space <laughs> and having more of a grounded Superman. And that's something I'm, I'm kind of interested in. Like, I'm wondering how long that stays that I'm going to keep watching the show. But well, DC Universe was long, so I, I watched quite a bit of it. That's what I'm saying. I did two, and then I also watched... I was watching that, and I was watching Superboy season two and on a lot. Um, but So we have 12-year-old Clark come in, talking to Ma, and she tells him his story in a very, like, the narrative, like, Ma tells Clark his story, and he thinks back, and he understands. And I just like, Ma, why am I different than everyone else? Why? Gee, God. I'm like, I'd like... You see, Ma, I started growing hair on my arms. And, and I'm starting to find Ma and pretty. Like, it was just, it was, it was awkward, man. The kid's, like, overacting. And it's like Sarah is trying to rationalize everything. She's like, oh, you know, you just, you just stronger than most boys, or you just got, re-. and he's like, he's like, we were playing baseball in the yard today, Ma, and no one could find that baseball. And I found it behind a rock. Well, see, you got better eyesight. Yeah, better. No, Mom, I looked through the rock. Oh, well, I mean. Well, I can't talk myself out of this one, <laughs> even. So let's just, and then we jump to 25 years. And we have Sarah talking to Eben. And we're about 15 minutes into the episode. And it's April 10th. That's Clark's birthday. Uh, and as we know that now, Climax and everything, February 29th is Superman's birthday. Yep. Eben is like, walks in, stage right, into the room from being out in the field talking about how Sarah's telling him how she sent Clark out and all this. Even then says, I have to uh, manage the tractor. But Even's acting like, 25 years? I don't remember getting that boy. Like, like 25 years? What he, the heck? He's like, wow, 25 years past that. Gee, God, already. <laughs> Exit stage left yep. to go back to the tractor. Walks and then just grabs his heart and has an overdramatic heart attack and dies. It's literally out of nowhere. <laughs> like, at least, like, you know, I think, you know, Glenn Ford has the moment of walking, like, stutter, then, like, grabbing his arm, and like, oh no. And then it cuts. Well, doesn't he, like, he runs with him? A yeah, bit he starts to jog, off. and then he's like, oh yeah. no. Like, Evans, like, ah! <laughs> um, yes. But, you know, that says that Glenn Ford technically is the first live action Jonathan Kent. Not Pa Kent, but Jonathan Kent. Yes. So, Jonathan? How does it, how do you, so, even dies on Clark's birthday. <laughs> like, and so we're at 16 minutes and 50 seconds when George shows up in the background. And this is a 22 Eight, minute, 45 second minute. episode or something like that? 28 minute episode. Oh, 28 minutes. So we have 12 minutes left, total. Yes. Um, now, we have him standing there, and Sarah says something to him like, he was a good man. Yeah, that's exactly what she says. And he's like, he's yes, a good father. He's, he's like, are you going to be okay all alone, Ma, by yourself? Yeah, I'll be okay. You want to miss Paul? Oh, he was a good man. Like, right when he dies, she's like, or the doctor the doctor comes out and says, Oh, yeah, the doctor's <laughs> yeah, like, the doctor. I'm sorry, Sarah, I'm and sorry. walks off. <laughs> He didn't make it. You're so, no, he doesn't say that. He just says, I'm sorry. Like, and walks off and they're like, oh. oh. And then you see George Reeves uh, right next to her for the first time. And then she's not, like, hysterical. She's just like, he was a good man. 
So now we're Clark showing up in Metropolis. And, you know, we have a nice little narrative talking about Clark, and he puts on his glasses. Oh, but wait, 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 hold on. I'll back up a second. Sarah says, you got that costume I packed you? And he's like, yes, yes Ma. Yeah, we got to talk about that. This Definitely. is one reason I've always had a problem with the idea that Martha made the suit. Unless you subscribe to, like, the Superman aura thing. She's like, I made it out of the blankets that you came in. No. And he's like... She said blanket. Yeah, but later I think there's like a couple... There was two, but whatever. Because she said, it's indestructible. No acid or nothing can burn it. But somehow needle and thread... Thank you. Can, you know... That's why I've always ha- kind of had a... No, I mean, I, I have no problem with Martha making this suit. I do have a problem with a baby blanket being used... The whole thing, she's like, I made out of the red and blue blanket you were born in. That blanket being enough fabric to fit a grown man. That's why I, <laughs> I will pull the comment. I will find it and show you. But in Superman 252 <laughs> issue zero, when he's getting ready to go, you find out the red cape that he has is Jarrell's cape. And Jarrell takes his cape off and wraps his son up in it and puts him in. See, that works. And to me, that is or one thing. cape. Yes. Not the suit. <laughs> I would love to see in live action in the scene of Jarrell and Lara placing so that he kind of has something of his father's. I love that idea. Um, so we get Clark in Metropolis, goes to the Daily Planet, which is funny because in the narration they always say at a major metropolitan newspaper, but then they have the Daily mm-hmm. Planet. Uh, we get to hear Perry White. Not my favorite Perry White. Um, and Clark waiting for a job, you know, to interview for a reporter. And Perry's yelling and stuff, and he yells at the secretary to send Lois Lane in. And we meet Phyllis Coates, who is Lois Lane. So that's cool. You know, like, this is our first time discussing her as Lois on the show. Because it's not till what? No, there's two Loses. Yeah, it's in season two that switches to Noel Neal. Oh, that's right, that's right. Mm-hmm. I thought it was Noel then went to Phyllis, my bad. Yeah, because Phyllis was the one who was in Superman in the Mole Man also. Right? Yeah. Cause, oh, cause Noel, I think so. Yeah, because Noel was with Kirk, if I remember right. Man, why am I I'm failing? But anyways, um, and I think, you know, she gives a really good Lois vibe. Um just being there for the little bit she is. And what's funny is they say, um, Mr. White can't see you right now. And Clark's like, well, I guess I just won't get to see him right now. And then Clark goes into a janitor's closet, which leads to the ledge. And I just love him walking on the ledge, like the idea of like this building. And he walks in and Mr. White's like, how did you get in here? Where are you? Where are you? And he's like, that's okay. exactly, exactly what he said. <laughs> he's like, I came in through the window. He's like, what? This building is as flat as can be with a small, tiny ledge. He's like, this is 28 floors up, boy. And then Jimmy Olsen, played by Jack Larson, comes busting in. Jack, who uh, some people, if you don't know, would later be the bartender in Superman Returns. Which was a nice nod of the scene with Jimmy and Jimmy. And we find out there's a guy, there was a blimp that was flying. And uh, the people were safe. There's one guy still hanging on by a rope. And they all run out. And then we cut to the guy hanging from the rope on the blimp. And we just see, I mean, it is quick. We see Superman fly in and catch the man. And then it cuts to the guy telling Mr. White and Lois how he woke, he got saved by this streak and that he was found behind a, uh, by Mr. Kent and he gave Mr. Kent the story and then Lois says, oh, we saw something fly away too right as we got there. And it's really cool, like, building tension. And Lois is like, how did you get this story when you left there after us? And, and hold on, hold on, hold that thought real quick because as the guy's telling Mr. White this, he refers to him as a super guy. And then um, Mr. White comes in and hands Lo- 
Clark, the newspaper, they already printed it, says, Superman saves, story by Clark Kent. And that's when Lois is like, does her, how did you get there before? And he's like, well, we can't all be a Superman, Lois. Wink to the camera. And that ends the episode. Um, and I forgot how, like, Superman's just a, like a tease in that episode. But one thing I love yeah. about this series, I like George as Clark Kent. It's it's not the reinvention that Chris does later where he's more of the nerdy. This is a very, like, no-nonsense Clark Kent. And I think if you think about the world back then, how disconnected things were, you can be Superman and Clark without having to really trick people. You know, there was... You couldn't get pictures as fast as we do now. Like, there wasn't the instant media. You know, people might never see Superman's face. Like, they might not be able to study it, much less be able to, like, study Clark Kent and Superman. You know, they weren't printing reporters' pictures in the paper. Yeah. And he says, uh... He says, well, maybe... He says, uh... Well, maybe I'm a Superman, Lois. Or maybe I'm a Superman, Miss Lane. He always does that, like. And it's the wink at the camera. He teases. He teases her all the time. He teases Lois all the time that, you know, well maybe I'm Superman. Da 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 da. It's like something they'd never believe, Clark Kent. And then uh, they use that a lot in the animated series yeah. when. Uh, they had interactions and stuff, and she always questioned him and stuff. He always hinted at, well, maybe I'm Superman. And she just blew him off about it. <laughs> and and that's... The, the, the animated Superman is very George Reeves. Very much so. Because he's no nonsense. He's and, nothing. and that's what I like about... I like his Clark. To me, his Clark... And it kind of falls more in line with Dean Cain's Clark. Where I think those are like the versions where it starts to teeter. Where Clark is more of the real person. And Superman's more of an act. And not really building the three part of Clark is an act, Superman's an act, and then he's in the middle. Right. Um, compared to where Batman is Batman all the time and then Bruce Wayne's an act. Yeah. You know, Superman has the three parts. Um, and that's probably, I mean, that's that, that's probably partially why, like, um, you know, I, I I grew up and I liked, I always liked Dean Cain's Clark Kent because he wasn't, he wasn't a bumbling fool. Um, he was a real person, and uh, you know why Tom Welling's Clark Kent. He he was Clark for so long, you know what I mean. He was he was himself yeah. before he had to come up with, you know, this or that, and uh, and then the same thing with Henry Cavill, you know, like his Clark Kent isn't some isn't the same isn't a bumbling fool either, you know, he's a real guy with a real job, and I mean that's why I think. I mean, if you think about it, Chris played him like that, and then, of course, John and Gerard played him like that. Brandon played him like that, because Brandon was to play him like Chris. Yeah. And then, you know, George... I mean, Kirk Allen played him not as tough guy-ish as George did, you know, but a little bit more of, like... Mm, he wasn't the bumbling fool... That, that was what I think more of like a Silver age thing. Because Clark in the comics in the Golden Age wasn't like that either. And that's why I'm kind of interested in like where Tyler's going to take Clark. Um, and what the Superman and Lois show will. Will it be more like the... I always... I go back to like the Dean Kane Because it's more of like the closer reference than going back to George here. But it'd be in that same vein. Because... Face it, Cavill's Clark didn't really get to breathe. Yeah. His Clark, we saw him interact with Perry, and the lady he 
interviewed and the the older gentleman in the hallway that he interviewed. I never really got to see him. Lo Lois doesn't count. You know what I'm saying? And that was one problem, I think, with Man of Steel and BVS is Superman never really got to interact with a lot of people. If you really look at who he interacted with, it was either people that knew both sides of his secret or very, like, the Clark stuff was very little. But anyways, that's the adventures of Superman. Well, especially when it came to the theatrical cut of BBS, it was way less. Yeah, we won't even get into that. But that's, yeah. the, that's the adventures of Superman, the pilot episode. I do look forward to reviewing some more of these episodes once he's more full on Superman and getting to like really see the characterization that he brings. Um, but I was shocked at how short it was. Because in my brain, I think I remembered it longer and how little Superman was actually in the episode. I think I right. merged in my head the serials and this episode. It's, it's easy to do because it's one of those things I've never set and really, other to like, when I was re-watching on DC Universe, of like, set and like, study watched it, you know, it's always like, oh, it's, it's on. Like, I'm not really paying attention to like, what season is this? What episode is this? Because they didn't have it as tight knit as the way we do stories now, um, but yeah, it was good. It was fun. Um, it's always kind of that show where if I was with my grandparents now, like I'd be like, "What are you gonna watch? Let's watch this." Instead of watching Matt Lock and Perry Mason, let's and Andy Griffith, let's watch George Reed Superman. But all right, well, Brian, I think it's about time to wrap it up because. Uh, James probably wants to get back to watching the Arnold and get back. He might. He, does. he might have to go free the, the people of Candor. So we'll let you go, James. You go. You go say. <laughs> Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.